Welcome, let's dive into Adobe Illustrator and create a few basic shapes uh, and then color them and add some effects. Uh, when you're all done with this tutorial, uh, your artboard or Adobe Illustrator will look a little bit like this. Let's get started. So in Illustrator, uh, we're gonna launch that, the brown and orange AI in the dock. And that is gonna bring up Adobe Illustrator. Um, from here, this is the uh, welcome screen, of course, um, and the first thing we're going to do is create a new document. So to do that, click Create New. That's going to bring up the new document dialog. Um, and uh, to get started, uh, it uh, looks a little bit familiar maybe to other programs you might, be, uh, might have used before, like Photoshop. Um, you can do a custom document, you can do all types of presets. Um, in this case, uh, we are going to uh, create a custom document here. And what we're going to do is um, up in the preset details, it's called Untitled 2. We'll go ahead, uh, go ahead and label that Part 1 for our... Um, and then uh, we're going to create this in terms of a size. I think it's actually defaulted here at 8.5 by 11 inches. That's fine. That's just sort of a standard piece of paper. That's great. Um, let's talk a little bit about artboard. So in Adobe Illustrator, you create um, artboards, and that is what you actually put all your designs on. Um, and you can do multiple artboards. Sometimes it's really helpful to have more than one up that you're working on. Maybe they're linked somehow based on whatever the design that you're doing. Um, but you uh, have to create at least one artboard, um, but often multiple ones are a good idea. So in this case, we're going to create two eight and a half by 11 artboards. Um, and then this brings us to bleed. Bleed is the concept of uh, when you're printing something, um, you often need like the edge of the paper not to print all the way to the edge of the paper um, so that the printing process can grab the paper as it goes through the uh, printing machine. Um, and that actually gets trimmed off in the end and, and becomes waste, but it's necessary as part of the printing process. So you don't want to uh, put any of your graphics over the bleed because it would just get chopped off. So in this case, um, we're going to set the bleed. We'll set it to half an inch, 0.5, and it'll go and fill all the way through. Um, and then this is going to be in color mode C, M, K, Y, cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black. And it's um, high resolution, 300 pixels or points per inch. Um, that would be like if it was appropriate for printing. Uh, with your document set up as part one, eight and a half by 11, half inch bleed all the way around, two artboards, go ahead and say create and watch the magic happen. And there it is. Here is our uh, main workspace in Illustrator. Um, we have two artboards, eight and a half by 11 in the center here. This is where we'll be adding some shapes in just a minute. Um, on the left hand side is a toolbar. The toolbar right now is set to uh, the basic tools. Um, we're gonna expand that in just a little bit here because I know that we will need more than just the basic tools. And then on the right hand side, you have properties of whatever you might be working on, uh, layers, etc. So it looks probably somewhat familiar if you have used any of the other Adobe tools. If not, this is just kind of the where you start working from. So the next thing I'd like to do is just sort of enhance the view or the workspace a little bit, customize it. And here is a few, uh, a few things that can help you as you're doing designs. Um, under the view menu, um, the first thing I'd like to do is turn on rulers. So if you go and scroll down to rulers here and say show them, uh, what you could see is that the rulers on the top and the bottom, um, these are, it looks like they are in inches, um, are, are up on the screen. That's very helpful when you're setting guides, etc. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, also, um, as you're putting shapes, sometimes you have to be really precise about exactly where you place them so they align properly, etc. So showing the grid, now you can see that um, a very detailed grid just kind of overlaid the artboards. That will not show up in any of your designs, but it will help you align text and align other things. So I'd recommend keeping that on. And then finally, I told you about this toolbar. These tools are, you know, basic tools that we will use. A uh, very common one here is the selection tool to select um, whatever item you want to work on. You can also, there's a direct selection tool where you can get down to the path level. I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, but uh, 
these are just kind of a few of the tools that are available and I know that we're going to be using um, much more than this so I think for my workspace anyway I want to see the advanced toolbar um, so I'm going to go to window and I'm going to go to toolbars and I'm going to choose advanced and there is a lot more selections a lot more choices to choose from but as you get to know them uh, you'll probably be using um, many of these and we'll certainly be doing it in our tutorials. So it's a good idea to just to keep this up. All right, so with this being your workspace, um, what we're gonna do now is dive into a few basic shapes um, and uh, how to create them. Uh, we're gonna then edit those shapes a little bit, add some stroke, uh, maybe some brush effects, uh, some graphic styles, some gradients, um, and then we'll get into uh, slicing and erasing parts of the shapes as well to make something new. So if you just kind of move around, you can see the different types of tools that are available. Um, one that is uh, we're going to play with a little bit here is actually the shape tool. Um, right now I have the star set up. You might have it set at the rectangle, uh, depending on you know where it was defaulted last. Um, but you can see there's all kinds of basic shapes that you can draw in Illustrator. We're going to use each one of these in terms of the rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and star. So why don't we go ahead and do that now. We're going to start with a rectangle tool. Um, and this brings some crosshairs. Now I can just click and drag to create a rectangle. Um, you'll see a purple line show up when it becomes a perfect square. And if I let go right there, I just created a perfect square, which is great. Um, so I've got the square, the square kind of laid down here. Um, now, uh, the next shape, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and lay down all the shapes first. Let's do that together, and then we'll start uh, manipulating them or changing them. Um, so now I'm going to go to, let's put down a polygon. Yeah, let's do that. Um, now, for the polygon, instead of clicking and dragging, I'm just going to click once, and that's going to bring up the polygon Uh, dialogue. And the reason I did that is because you can see you can adjust the number of sides for your polygon right here. Um, in this particular case, let's make a six sided polygon. So I can just enter six, say OK, watch the magic happen. There it is. Now, if I wanted to take this and make it a little bigger, I can grab this edge and I can do that. Now, you can see I'm, I'm distorting it when I do that. Um, and maybe I don't want to do that. If you don't want to distort it and keep it all proportional, hold down the shift key, shift key, and it'll drag up proportionally, which is a helpful hint. All right, next thing I would like to do is maybe make a circle. Um, for the circle, I am going to hold down the shift key as I click and drag, and that will make a perfect circle instead of an oval. So I'm holding down the shift key here and dragging it out, and there it is. Um, I'm also going to make a star. So the star is much like the uh, polygon tool and that is that if I click once um, I can pick how many points. Um, right now I have this set at three points. Three po a three-pointed star is a triangle by the way. Um, let, let's make a five-pointed star. So I'm going to say five points. I'm going to say okay. There it is. I'm going to go to my selection tool and shift drag that a little bigger. That looks great. Very good. Um, and then if I move this around you can see how these pink lines show up. It is now perfectly aligned with the top of the polygon. Um, here it's perfectly centered to the, uh, to the midpoints. Um, that's a very helpful tool when you're trying to align things. All right, uh, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna stay in this star tool and I'm gonna make a triangle. So I'm gonna go to my next, the second artboard, click and I'm gonna make a three-sided star, which is a triangle. I'm gonna use my selection tool and shift, drag that up so it gets a little bigger. There we go. Might as well take advantage of that. That looks great. Um, and then finally, um, I am going to make another polygon. Um, now, I could just go to the polygon tool and recreate it, but let's say this is the perfect, perfect polygon. I think it's a, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that, that's a hexagon, right? So this is the perfect hexagon um, that I want to make. Um, I want to recreate. Well, I can actually just duplicate it um, with the selection tool selected. Um, I can hold down the Alt key on the Mac and you can see how the cursor changed to kind of like two arrows. See that? 
Um, if I hold it down, click and drag, I just recreated an identical copy of that hexagon. So um, anyway, that's just a good trick to, uh, to know. All right, now that we've created our shapes, um, the next thing I want to do is to start um, changing them up a little bit. And I'm going to start with the square. Um, if you look at the square here and kind of over to this side, the right hand side, um, there's this dialogue that says appearance. Um, right now, the appearance of this square is that it's filled with white and that it has a stroke around it. There's a little black stroke around all the different shapes and it's one point wide. The opacity is 100%. So let's play with that a little bit first. Um, if I click on the white, I have some color options and different things I can apply. I'm just going to pick a simple CMYK green um, here. And you can see I clicked on it and the magic happened. The square turned green, right? Um, now the stroke is black and it's rather thin. So if I wanted to turn it up a little bit, I could just arrow up a little and kind of watch it grow. I think maybe a five point stroke would be good. Um, and, uh, you know, it just kind of got a little bit more interesting. We can click away and you can sort of see that it's, um, you know, now it's a green square with a five point black stroke around it. Uh, let's get a little fancier with that. Do you see how the stroke is underlined here? Um, this could, this will bring up from here, the stroke dialog, uh, which looks like that. You can also get to that from window and stroke is right there uh, but we'll just go ahead and bring it up from here so stroke dialogue um, and you can make more refined adjustments and one of the interesting ones here is that the stroke does not have to be uniform do you see the profile down here if i drop this down you can do different apply different styles to it like this is, would be you see how it's kind of off balanced more towards the left um, this one is kind of all around it just changes up the style of the stroke a little bit um, the other thing we can do, I'm just going to go back to a uniform stroke, is um, you can create uh, kind of brush patterns, fancy brush patterns around um, images as well. So in order to do that, um, we're going to bring up the brush library. So if I go to window and all the way down here, uh, you can see uh, various graphic styles. We'll use a few of these, um, but let's start with the brush library. And there's all kinds of different brushes to choose from to create all kinds of different effects. I think what we'll do with this one, I think what we'll do is go with an artistic brush. And let's go ahead and choose the artistic ink brush set and see what that brings up for us. Um, you can see here, I'll just make this a little bigger. There's all kinds of interesting uh, patterns to choose from. If I click on this uh, gray one right here, did you see how that changed? Now it put a um, interesting kind of brush ink stroke around it. Um, this one is kind of a little, a uh, little bit darker and maybe a little heavier ink stroke. I, I actually really like the looks of that. Um, and these might be actually interesting effects. These are sort of like ink spatters, etc. Um, but let's just go with this one as a, as a basic um, as a basic brush. There's different styles. You can see here I also have this artistic paintbrush up, and these could be some really interesting things as well. I actually kind of like that. Um, and you can kind of play around with them, but very different styles to put sort of borders around and just use as general brushes. Let's move on to the hexagon. Now for this one, I am going to uh, color it using an, a graphic style. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, just to show you how to do it, is I have it selected under fill. Um, let's say I don't want any fill. Right now it's filled with white. Let's say I want it to be clear. Um, that is actually the red line that says none. Um, just go ahead and select that. And when you do, uh, you have just, it's now, it's now just clear. It's, it's, it, there's nothing in the fill area. We can go ahead and leave the stroke on. Um, that's fine. If we wanted to, we could actually turn that off as well, though. Um, and now it's literally just the path, and that's all that's there for the, for the hexagon. So now if I go to Window, uh, just below the Brush Library is the Graphic Styles Library. So um, there's a lot to choose from, um, and actually it looks like this might be getting cut off from uh, the recordable screen, that's okay. Uh, but if I scroll down here, you can see um, artistic effects, scribbles, etc. Let's go with this scribble effect at the very bottom and choose that, and that brings up the scribble effects library. Um, you can add more of these as you go. Um, just by simply 
clicking on library and adding adding more like illumination styles etc um, they're all available in the drop down i'm just going to go back to scribble and i'm just going to apply one here this uh, i guess looks interesting and you can see it looks like little scribbled uh coloring pencil lines um you can pick this one is scribble, uh, scribbled outside of the line um, here's an interesting color one i sort of like this one um, but you can play around with these different effects and find one that might fit your design i'm just going to stick with uh with scribble 17 because that looks looks good to me um all right now let's move on to the circle um, for the circle i am going to go ahead and fill it uh, with that cmky green that we had before um, i will go ahead and turn up the stroke this time i'm just going to enter right in the dialog um, to five points um, and what i want to do with this circle is uh, adjust the opacity the opacity is the ability of the image to be seen through it's how clear or how trans translucive or par transparent it might be so an opacity of 100 percent is 100 percent opaque which means you cannot see through it um, but as you turn it down uh, you can see if you kind of watch the magic happen here when i let go it's now rather clear you can actually see that grid through it um, so let's go ahead and set this at an opacity of 65 percent and I did that right here under the appearance area, and now you can see it's got this sort of translucent quality to it. Make sense? All right, now let's move on to the star. Um, for the star, I want to fill it, um, but I'm going to fill it with a gradient. Um, under the fill area, there is a few gradients here to choose from. So if you look at all these solid colors, patterns, and then you kind of get over here and you get these interesting um, different grades or orange that fades into yellow um, blue sky that sort of fades if i click on it you can see that um you know the star has now got this gradient from blue to clear um we'll actually let's play with this one a little bit the orange to yellow um there's all kinds of options that come with this so if you click on gradient options here um i'll show you how to adjust the gradients a little bit you can also get to that from the window and gradients area um, the first thing you can do with gradients is you can change um, how it fades. This would be like a radial gradient. See how it comes from the center, which is kind of interesting. Um, this one is uh, linear from left to right. You can change the angle that it uh, fades at, which is interesting too. and might be a, um, important for your design. The other thing you can do is the start and stop points. So here is the gradient slider and these are the colors you can choose different colors and then you can choose the blending point the location where it it blends and starts starts uh, fading in and fading out um, so for instance if i start messing with uh, this orange here i can double click on the orange and let's just say i want to pull in a little bit i don't know what to pull in like there's an interesting purple or a red um, whatever would go with your design but you can kind of start playing around with this a little bit um, and seeing that you have an infinite number of choices to uh, to pick from. I'm just going to stick with a simple, like that red right there. It just, I don't know, looks good to me. Um, and uh, you can adjust these gradients any way that you want. There's also a lot of different preset gradient choices that you can pick from, which are interesting. So let's go ahead and close that out. And then let's stick with the star here, because I want to show you one more thing. We've been using the direct selection tool, which kind of selects the entire image or the entire uh, shape excuse me um one thing that you notice when you move around is that um you get a change in the cursor now you've got these arrows going in both directions uh if i click and drag on that now i can spin this around any way that i want this star right so i can do that with any of these by the way i can square i can change the angle of my square um, etc. You can, but you have the ability to sort of grab the end once you get those arrows and you can move it around and you can also be very precise with these angles too. I'm just kind of kind of spinning them a little bit, but you can you can change that around as well. Um, and the other thing you can do is I mentioned before we have the selection tool. There's also the direct selection tool. And watch what happens when I click on this. Um, it changes. You no longer have that outward bounding box. Um, and the reason is because with the direct selection tool, you can directly select certain paths. So here's an anchor point on a path. And this little handle right here means that I can pick it 
click and drag and completely change the, the shape of this star. So if I do that and I start moving in and out, you can see that it, it will only let me go up to the uh, tight, tightest point in the radius. But um, I'm just moving this in a little bit and look at that. It's actually changing the shape of the, of the star. It's uh, dulled out the points, um, which is interesting. So you can manipulate paths um, inside of uh, inside of Illustrator, which is very powerful because you essentially can make any shape that you want. All right, let's move on to artboard number two, which is right here. And I'm just gonna apply a couple of quick effects. So uh, let's choose the triangle first. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna spin it around so it makes a little more sense. Uh, if I hold down the shift key, by the way, it'll spin directly to a uh, 180 degree angle, um, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna make this yellow um, for a reason that will be obvious in just one moment. Um, and now we're going to play with uh, the eraser tool. So the eraser tool is kind of straight down underneath the brush. There it is. Um, underneath that is scissors and knife. We'll play with the knife tool in just a minute. Uh, but the eraser tool, when I click on it, um, it has sort of this circle that follows around the crosshairs. The circle represents the radius or the size of erasing that's going to occur. So a little shortcut for you, I can use the bracket keys on your keyboard and I can bracket down and bracket up. And that is going to increase and decrease the size of the circle. Uh, for what I am going to do here, I'll just put it at about that point right there, just kind of eyeballing it. Um, and let's see what this does. So I'm gonna just actually, in the center of this triangle, I'm just gonna offset, maybe click once. And look at that, it actually, just erased um, a part of the triangle, but it also, do you see the blue lines? It created a whole new path around that, and that's important to understand, um, is that it is it is creating a path, a new, a new path or lines within whatever you're erasing. Um, I can maybe cut out a little bit of the side here. Here, is this starting to look like anything to you? Yeah, there you go. It looks like a piece of cheese, doesn't it? So um, the eraser tool, that's how you that's how you use that. And uh, there you go. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you was the knife tool. So um, with uh, the other hexagon here, um, let's see, I think what I'll do is go ahead and turn off the fill, but keep the stroke on. That probably is a good idea. Maybe I'll turn the stroke up just a little bit so we can see it more easily. Um, I want to use the knife tool to sort of slice up the shape. Um, so to do that, uh, underneath the eraser tool, click and hold down for a minute. Here is the knife. There's all kinds of different ways to divide up shapes and um, uh, subtract them, etc. I'll show you how to do that um, in future tutorials. But for now, uh, let's just slice up this hexagon a little bit and to do it all I'm gonna do is click and drag through it so I'm gonna kind of go click and drag here boom just sliced it up right uh, click and drag here boom just sliced it up and maybe I'll just do one more for fun like that and I sliced it up so now what can I do with this well actually what you can do with it um, with the selection tool selected is you can click on a path and you can actually separate it. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys to do that because I didn't want, I don't want to separate it too much. Click on a path and now they're, they're actually their own separate shapes, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can use that a lot of different ways as you're making designs. Um, you know, the point is, or the interesting thing about Illustrator is with just some of these simple tools, you can literally um, create just about anything. I mean, detailed characters, uh, detailed logos, um, there's just an endless number of things that you can do um, just by knowing that you can manipulate these shapes in so many different ways. Um, so now this is interesting. I just went ahead and separated all these uh, shapes. Um, and what I'd kind of like to do now actually is color them. Um, there's a few different ways to do that, by the way. Um, but uh, one interesting way to do it is if I go ahead and just click and drag and select this entire area. The reason I need to do that is um, I'm about to use something called the live paint bucket and the live paint bucket uh, if you're going to paint something needs to know what sort of the boundary area of it 
of the object that you're going to be painting in. So um, I just selected all those items. And I'm going to come over here, and it can be a little tricky to find this one. Um, but there's a live paint bucket. Um, it might be under the Shape Builder tool if uh, nobody has used this before, so it might look like that. But anyway, click and drag down. Here's the live paint bu bucket. And the interesting thing about the live paint bucket is, if you just look at it for a second, it looks like a paint bucket. Above it is um, three different colors. These happen to be the three different choices that we picked um, in the appearance area. And it's right now it's preset to uh, no fill because that's the last thing we chose. But if I start arrowing over, it's is picking colors. And you can see the colors are also changing uh, the box on the toolbar and under the fill. So let's just say I want to use this green at first. Well, I can go to this path and I can fill with green. Now, if I want to go to blue, I can fill with blue in the next one. If I want to scroll over to that looks like some type of pink, I can do that. I can scroll up and now let's get a nice orange in there if I'm seeing that right. Uh, I can scroll to the next one. You can see how it gets the where it's going to dump the paint. It's got it, it highlights the path in red. There's a good yellow. Let's use that. And then over here I can go to maybe this lime green. Is that what that is? Yeah, that looks good. So uh, interesting, live paint is really useful. Um, you can uh, draw anything you want in Illustrator. You can bring in and trace objects, and then you can literally paint them with the paint bucket, uh, which is actually kind of fun, and you can create some really amazing things with that. Okay, so in this first tutorial, we learned how to, how to insert shapes into artboards, uh, manipulate those shapes, and uh, kind of color them, uh, add effects to them, um, and to uh, change them up a little bit. Thanks for watching.